Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from Legacy Systems in Houston. And today we're going to go over how to load firmware to uh, GS18. Uh, we can also use this for GS10, 15, or 14. So quickly going over the items that's required or recommended. We'll talk about the firmware compatibility between Captivate, which is the CS20, GS18, to Viva, which could be the sensors like a 14, 15. We'll get on the My World website, download the firmware and the license keys. And then we'll load the license key. And then we're going to quickly reset the sensor and go through how to load the firmware. Okay. So the first slide is going to go over what we recommend. The GEV234 cable is really handy to have. Here's the part number. This can plug in uh, from your CS20 to your sensor or from your computer to the sensor. If you have a GS14 or 16, you have to use a micro SIM card. If you have the adapter, it will fit into the GS10 or 18. Um, if you have the regular SD card, they'll work with GS10 or the GS18. Um, we recommend Leica cards, format them. Um, worst case, a SanDisk card is the next best card to use. Um, Captivate has firmware versions. This is the GS18 and CS20 data collector. So version 6 has to line up with either version 9 or version 10 of Viva. So if you have like a TS15, um, I think you need either version 9 on the TS15 to hook up to the CS20. Uh, the previous one's version 5 would have to line up with version 9 Viva, 4 with version 8, so on and so forth. And the X here could be any version, so 7.5 could match up with 3.5 from right here. Okay, so you had a GS14 and you had version 3.5 on your CS20, we'd have to have some version 7.0, 7.5 on the GS14 for it to communicate. These are the end date to show you, if you check it on your, your receiver, what, what level you can upload your, your firmware to. Um, when you load firmware, never jump more than three firmware versions. So here's a GS14. Um, if I had an older firmware version, like 5.05, .05, I re the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I upgrade to version 5.50 Viva. This is really important. And then from 5.5, we can jump up, not exceeding a level 3. So you can go to version 8, and then from 8, jump up to version 10. To reset the sensor, you'll see two buttons here. If you hold those two buttons at the same time, the lights will flash. After around 10 seconds, the top row will blink. Then you let those go, and that will reset the sensor. So that's a good idea to do before you load firmware. I'm going to do the firmware load on the computer, but if I, on the CS20, we can hook the cable up and hit function windows. And the web server cable will then link up to your sensor to do exactly what we're doing here. If it's Bluetooth via the CS20, then you can do the web server Bluetooth, but we've got to do that in the Windows screen. Okay, let's take a quick look at my world. And what I can do is I'm um, under my products in my world, and I can go down to GNSS. That just isolates my GNSS receivers. And what I can do is scroll down. I got GS18 here. So I click on here. And to add that, you can add a product and then type in the equipment number and they'll register it. And then if we order the CCP um, download keys, that's where I download the license key. So we need to upload that to extend our date to load the firmware. If I go to tools, this is a handy little tab. And what this will do if if you have a GEV234, the device drivers, if I scroll down here, there's a device driver for the 234 to load my computer, uh, depending on what uh, version of, of Windows you have. Okay. And that will now allow you to use the cable. The software, once again, will have the latest firmware versions. So I click on here, it's a little bit slow. But we'll go in here, and then basically there's a release notes. I can download 6.01, it's a very big file. And then if I need to go back to an older firmware version, I can click on there. Okay, so that goes through uh, the, uh, the, the My World website. What we'll do is I've now got a web server here. Um, let's move that up. And I type in the IP 192.168.254.2. So just hit the Windows Explorer, type that in. My cable's hooked up, my sensor's on. Then it pulls up and shows me the serial number. I can take a look under the information. 
receiver information and it tells me the mains end date. Now, what I can do is I can go back, I want to load the license key. This is a little bit confusing. I want to have my license key on my computer. So before in the CS20, we'd have the license key under the system subdirectory with the firmware. If I put that in the sensor, I can't upload the license key. So have it somewhere accessible. So it could be on your CS20 SD card. So what we'll do is we'll hit uh, user and it says load option key. And now it wants me to look for that option key. So I'll click the green button, browse. And basically I went to my subdirectory on my computer. I'll pick this license key, hit open. Then I'll hit the little uh, file floppy drive and that will load, it should just take a few seconds, okay? And now it says option key successfully loaded. So once again, that license key is on my computer. It's not in the sensor on the SD card. So just that's a really important step. Now that that's loaded, we can go back and uh, basically now we can hit user and load firmware. So I've got the SD card in the sensor. Um, right now, my battery strength appears 94%. That's important because you want to have good power. Hit load firmware and it says firmware is being upgraded. So basically, if I scroll down, we can click on here and here to get the firmware file. I read it and I hit this little green button here. That should allow me to load the firmware. Okay. And what I got to do is put the uh, SD card in the actual sensor. So we get it from my computer, put it in the sensor. And then we'll come back here and hit the green button. It says installation starts. And there's no progress bar, so it takes around 10 minutes. So what we we'll want to do is just let it do its thing. Uh, the sensor is going to go through, and you'll see the lights turn off and on. So after it's finished loading the firmware, just give it a good 10 minutes, walk away, take your time, and let it let it do, it, do its thing. It'll restart, and then it should come up and say version uh, 6.01. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what we need from the license key um, to the accessories to load the firmware on the sensor. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you found this beneficial.